Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ooh, I like that good morning. We may be we may be walking in still and in the foyer. That was a very strong good morning. Well, I want to welcome everybody in. Thank you guys for coming. If you are returning and if you're new, we're so happy that you've decided to join us this morning. If you could take your bulletin, which I don't currently have one, and fill out the connection card, which is a perforated strip on the back, and put drop it in our little drop box here. We'd love to connect with you this week. And we want to thank everybody who's watching from home or out and about or on their phones, on their computers, on Facebook Live or on YouTube. We want to thank you so much for spending part of your day with us. Why don't we stand and pray together as we begin to worship. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be here today as one body worshiping you and lifting up your name, Lord. We pray, Father, that we would make space for your spirit in this room today and that your name would be made great, Father. We love you in your name we pray. Amen. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. I want to challenge you guys a call to worship, so to speak. Um, we live in a really busy area of the country, and so we can have a lot of things swirling around in our heads. Um, but this is our time to worship our Creator together, um, which, you know, many voices are better than one, right? And the Bible says where two or more are gathered, God's Spirit is with us also. And uh, worship is a great way for us to respond to the Holy Spirit. And it's, it's mentioned in the Bible over 182 times, so it might be a little important, right? And, uh, and in the book of Luke, it says, if, if we don't praise God, the rocks will, which is like a verse that we used to, to teach to the kids in rock because they're rock. So they got to cry out louder than the adults, right? Um, but why don't we all cry out just so the rocks don't have to this morning, right? So let's just clear out all the distractions, all the busyness, all the work stuff, whatever it is. Um, and let's just worship God. This is, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys all know this song. If you don't, then maybe you're just new to church. But if you're not new to church, for sure you've heard this song, so... Let's um let's just lift our voices.
The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear not evil. For you are with me, you rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, our shepherd, thank you for, thank you, thank you for your perfect faithfulness and kindness to us. Help us to stay near to you forever. Please help us worship you as we rejoice in who you are, what you've done, and all you promised to do. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. This time we'd like to let our kids be dismissed towards the back of the room to meet their teacher to go to their classes. And we're going to take two whole minutes. to greet. You've got to greet everybody in the room in two minutes. It can be done. I've seen it happen before. So we're going to go greet everybody. Handshakes, hugs, high fives. Let's go.
greet each other. Uh, we're going to do things in a little bit different order today. We're going to do our announcements now. So I want to tell you about some things that are coming up. First is that tonight at 6 p.m. we have Revolution for grades 6 through 12 uh, downstairs. So we, we hope that uh, you, if you are 18, or your teens, if you are a parent, will be there. Next Saturday, our elementary Bible quizzers are having a quiz meet. It's going to be in Winchester. So um, this week, please be praying for, for our kids as they are now uh, working on showing all they know about the entire two books of the Bible, 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel. And so just pray for them to have confidence in what they've learned and fun. That's what we want quizzing to be about fun in it as well. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, we are doing a drive right now of towels and washcloths. So if you have some lightly used ones around your house, if you're just switching to a different decor style or they've just masked up a little bit too high for what you have room for in your cupboard, we'd love for you to bring those bet between now and the end of the month and leave them in our lobby. And those are going to help people that are in transitional housing. So folks that are experiencing homelessness or in a temporary housing or people that are maybe fleeing from a uh, tough home situation and need to be in this transitional housing, they need all the things you need in your house that we all want to have in our house. And so right now they've asked us to help with this issue of of uh, towels and washcloths. Um, on April 1st, there's a men's breakfast at 8.30. That's at the Bob Evans at Smoketown Road. No need to RSVP. You can just show up that day. And uh, last week, we'd said it was going to be here. We were working on outdated information. It will be at Bob Evans. Sorry for the confusion. And then the Sundays after that are two very exciting Sundays. So April 2nd is going to be Palm Sunday. It's going to be a family Sunday. We'll, work, we'll keep our elementary kids in with us, and we'll have a special service of celebration for Palm Sunday, and we will also have a baptism that day. If anybody else is interested in baptism, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, but you've never followed the Lord in obedience to that step of baptism, reach out. I'd love to talk with you and see if now is the time for that with you and, and join you in that process of discernment. And then the following Sunday is Easter. And Easter is such an amazing time of celebration. It's such a special service. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to have our normal service at 11 a.m. I mean, it'll be Easter, so it will be like a, a special service, but it's at our normal time. And then after, we're going to have an egg hunt in our front lot right after that. And what we do when we do that is that um, we actually advertise out to the community to encourage them to come and join us for Sunday service and then stay for the party. And so in order to do that, in order to give the community the best welcome possible, we need some extra help. And so if this is your church home and you're in town, I would encourage you to consider this an all-hands-on-deck kind of day and find a way to serve. So in your bulletin, there's a paper called the Top Five. It lists a variety of ways to serve that day, but also even in the days leading up to that. People can come in and stuff eggs or help us spruce up the grounds, things like that. So if you would be willing to complete that and then drop it in our offering box, um, we'll make sure that that gets to our team of folks that coordinate volunteers. There's one other special week that's coming up that I want to tell you about, and that is next Sunday is our annual meeting. So we are a church that's part of the Church of the Nazarene, and in Church of the Nazarene, we have to have an annual meeting once a year, which is amazing because it gives us a chance to celebrate what God has done, and it also helps us to have accountability to one another so you know what's going on in the church. And so that's next Sunday. Worship service is going to be the same. Um, but we will have voting. So if you are a member of the church, you will have the opportunity to vote online this week. We'll get um, e-ballots sent out late in the week, or you can complete it um, via paper when you're here next Sunday. So often what we do is we have this report, and we try to make it interesting. We try to make it beautiful. We try not to make it a snooze fest. So I hope that you will read it when it comes to you um, via PDF this week, and we'll also have some paper copies next week. But this year, we also wanted to give the opportunity for our board members to just give a, a little moment of testimony, witness, summary of what's been going on in their ministry. So we're just going to take a, a brief minute to hear from two of those folks now. And so I'm going to invite up Mary, um, who's our guest ministries outreach director, and Rodney, who's our men's director, and also is involved with benevolence and our staff liaison team. So I'll turn it over to you. 
Good morning, my name is Mary Taylor and I am the guest ministries director. And hopefully every day when you come into this church, whether you've been a member or a long time attendant or a new attendant to this church, um, you'll be greeted with smiles uh, by one of our, our friendly greeters and given our bulletins. Um, the way that we see our ministry is that you always feel welcome when you come in and then we continue to follow up on that whether it's uh, cards emails from the uh, the church office or pastor we want to make sure that everybody knows how welcome they are and in conjunction with that we also do a lot of teaming up with the other ministries so that if there's events um, not only our folks coming for an event but there's also a follow-up so that we can keep those folks that are visitors we can make them regular attendees and so uh, does anybody have any questions no okay I'm turning over to Rod Okay, good morning, church. Uh, as you all know, I'm, Rod, I'm Rodney Neese. Uh, I'm the director of the men's ministry, and I also oversee uh, benevolence as well. So those are the two areas that I'm going to go ahead and speak to this morning. Uh, men's ministry, uh, despite what is Pastor Luke in here, despite what he might say, we're a lot more than just breakfast at Bob Evans uh, <laughs> once a month. Uh, there's a lot of things that we try to incorporate and try to pull um, all the men in the church uh, together to do. And um, our ministry focus area for this past year has been on spiritual growth through uh, fellowship, mentorship, and encouragement. And how do we do that? Uh, through events like our breakfast, like I just talked about, as well as uh, we go out on fishing trips, um, we'll do study groups, which I'll speak about in just a second. Uh, we try to do things as baseball outings, district man camp uh, that Joel and uh, several others attend. And uh, as a ministry, we have shown our willingness to also, as a ministry, we've shown our willingness to uh, roll up our sleeves and try to help um, out others within our church and in the community that might be in need, whether it's taking care of lawns or helping people move. So the, the men in the church are, are definitely um, at large, if you will. Uh, Proverbs 27, 17, I have that as well. It says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Uh, I see that within our ministry, uh, especially in our Bible studies or our study groups that we have. Right now, we're studying a husband after God's own heart. And in these study groups, uh, there's a lot of uh, sharing of testimonies, life stories, um, experiences, and then also interpretation of what we have read throughout that week. And then we come together collectively, and we just share that with one another. And we're doing that virtually, and there's still time if you'd like to join us. Uh, I didn't write this down, but I would like to share, because as, as Mary was just talking, um, I send out a, a distro once a month. Uh, to all the men in the church. And if you're not getting that, please reach out to Mary, reach out to myself, so that way I can add you to that and you're getting those events that are coming up and so you can participate. Pastor Ethan, before he left, he asked that I uh, try to not focus so much on the men's ministry being just a bunch of old guys getting together for breakfast, but what we try to do is we try to be uh, a little wider than that, a little larger than that. So our focus isn't on age, so if you're a man and you're part of this church and you'd like to participate, at any age, we welcome you. Uh, the second, second ministry I'll speak to really quickly is the benevolence. Um, and our purpose is to come alongside people in need who invite us into their, their real lives with a hope to open doors, to be uh, relational with them so that they can see how Christ and the local church is relevant in their lives. And how do we do that? Uh, we do this through some amazing volunteers that we have within our church. Uh, our community connection uh, that includes uh, food pantry, clothing closet, uh, the community, con community connection closet. Um, through these ministries, our church has provided nearly 80 jackets during a coat drive, and this is in the last year. Um, serving nearly 20,000 people um, in the past year in our food pantry, we help six to 10 families a week with clothing, and recently received a $300,000 grant for a walk-in cooler and to construct a pavilion. Uh, 
the Holy Spirit can be clearly seen across this ministry and across all the volunteers who participate and help make this a success. Uh, church also, too, if you're not aware, we have a benevolence fund. Uh, we have a committee who reviews and votes on requests for the help for utilities and other areas that, that just need a little, bit of, a little bit of help to get across a financial need or a financial bridge. Uh, in the past year, over $2,000 from our church has been given to help out individuals within our community. And if you didn't know, our church also has held an English as a second language class. Uh, this year's class filled so quickly that we had to have a waiting list. Um, and then more importantly beyond that, the class has also led to individuals joining the congregation and coming and serving and worship with us. So just in summary, it's just wow, our ministry does a lot for his kingdom. So between men's ministry and benevolence, uh, it's just, it's been an honor to serve you uh, serve you, serve the church, and serve the Lord in this last year. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. So, um, you know, as, as the, we'll have two more of these little summaries today, and then next week we'll have a few more. So you're hearing um, a little bit of celebration about all the different areas of the church. But I hope what's, what's coming out is really what is the, at the heart of Church of the Nazarene, that we're not just a church of clergy, of pastors. We're very little that, you know, we, we have jobs. I have a job to do, Pastor Luke and Pastor Narcisa, we all have roles to play. But really, we're a church of the people and so grateful for all that people um, give of their time and their passions and their growth curve of how to lead and love and develop in that. It's amazing and so very grateful. Well, also kind of on this idea of it's not just pastors, I'm going to invite up my friend Yvette Moy to come. She's going to be giving our message today. Um, Yvette is also a graduate of Fuller Theological Seminary, and um, she's a layperson. And so she is apt, active in ministries in a variety of churches, helping with um, just like all of the ministry she's involved in is amazing. <laughs> you never know on a given week where she is or who she's helping. And one of those ministries that she has is to come and do guest uh, preaching here. So I was supposed to be backpacking this weekend. I was supposed to be having my wilderness experience with Jesus. Uh, and that did not happen because of my pinched nerve in my back. But I am grateful that she is here and going to bless us um, with, a, with a perspective on the word. So I will turn things over to you. Thank you, Pastor Pam. Uh, please rise for the gospel reading according to John. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? that he was born blind. And Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed to him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before uh, as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. And others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept on asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man, Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. And now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. 
Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And so they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? And his parents answered, We know that this is our son, who was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. And his parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews who had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. Know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, yet yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys in his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. But if this man were not from God, he could do nothing. So they answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that he had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. And Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one who is speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to him, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. So this man, born blind from birth, lives within an honor and shame culture. And it is assumed that the reason for his disability is sin. But the Torah says 
The sins or disobedience of parents are visited upon their children in the form of curses. While, dis while obedience to God provides blessings, so the Jews consider the blind man unclean and refuse to engage him for fear that the sin of his family might actually rub off on them. And so they shun him. So this individual retribution of a parent's sin coming upon children emerges in the Hebrew Bible with conflict between Job, I mean between Jacob and Esau. But as you remember, Esau forgives and reconciles with Jacob. So we see this interpretation of generational sin ending in Ezekiel chapter 18, which reads, The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine, the life of the parent as well as the life of the child is mine, and it's only the person who sins that shall die. So this is why Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sin is causing the physical blindness that each person is made in the image of God. That redemptive power of the gospel is to value all people and to receive the blessing of their spiritual gifts. Jesus says, this man is born blind so that God's work would be revealed in him. Only true faith means passing from darkness into light. We are saved by faith, but matured by obedience. Jesus rejects this folk religion of bad things happening to bad people and good things happening to good people. Instead, in this first healing from a distance, Jesus challenges the religious status quo of the Pharisees' power to exclude from fellowship because they are the only ones who have knowledge. They are the only ones who have this outward perfectionism, and so it is their pride that it is within them as they reject Jesus. But you see, whenever Jesus heals publicly on the Sabbath, he draws attention to this religious elite as they care more about their legalism than they do about people's humanity and their access to living water. As the Pharisees remain in spiritual blindness by rejecting Jesus, the blind man grows in faith, distinguishing between darkness and light, moving to follow Jesus as the prophet, as the healer, as that miracle worker, and then to worship Jesus as Lord. So the test of this true message in the Hebrew Bible is seeking God's love, hearing his voice, responding to his leadership, repenting that requires action to change. Sin is neither the presence of illness, nor is it the violation of the law but it is the resistance to recognizing the works of God in Jesus Christ. The Pharisees, why they are more faithful 
to self-made laws and to following Moses. However, in the transfiguration, we see that Moses witnesses to the revelation of God in Jesus. Jesus is the true bread from heaven. Jesus is the word made flesh. Jesus is the one who lives out God's command by laying down his life for the sheep. So today, are we too busy with the activities of daily life? Are we preoccupied with bigger buildings, bigger crowds, versus reaching the lost in our community? Do we allow pride to keep us from hearing the voice of God as we read the Bible or feed the poor? Do we choose to remain in sin, resisting Jesus or accepting that spiritual blindness? A very good friend of mine was actually born blind. We met in the late 1980s while serving the homeless and advocating for affordable housing in upstate New York. Each day, Robin shares her faith and her heart in working with the Department of the Blind in Richmond. There, she empowers her clients to be self-sufficient while also healing their wounds with the love of Jesus. Her greatest joy is working during the summer with adults suffering from intellectual disabilities at a place called Camp Rainbow. But she lives in her own season of wilderness. She does this with great sacrifice and perseverance as a wife of a husband who is suffering from mental illness, who now lives in a nursing home because he needs 24-7 care. But instead of uh, playing that blame game of being angry with God, she sings God's praises. She sings with her church choir. She reads scripture. She cares for aging friends by offering her own testimony of how Jesus gave her that living water as a child and as a young adult. So what should be our Lenten practice? We need to remind ourselves of the day we found the cleansing waters of baptism. Christ pay, pay, paid for our sins and that we receive salvation by grace and not through good works. This is like the blind man who goes to wash in the pool of Siloam. He not only receives his sight, but confesses faith that God is present in Jesus. So really, he is saved by faith, but matured by obedience. It is Jesus who spat on the ground and made mud. And as unlikely as it sounds, scientific evidence today suggests that even dog saliva, human saliva, has some antibacterial and antimicrobial properties. Surprisingly, even cat saliva contains several proteins and enzymes that function as a natural antibacterial agent. So it is these compounds that provide bacterial and fungal protection even today, this is how God made us. But by grace, the blind man now follows the good shepherd. 
So in these uncertain times where trauma becomes the mission field that we work in, find someone to share the hope of Jesus. This is expressed in the song, Amazing Grace. Listen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear that hour I first believed. Through many dangers and toils and snares, I have already come. It is this grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. So we are saved by grace and by faith, but matured by obedience. Amen. Why don't we pray together? Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would open our hearts and open our minds to the message that you have brought to us this morning through Yvette. We pray, Lord, that nobody would leave here the same as they were when they got here, Father, that your love and your grace would flow through us this week as we continue to walk in the world as your servants that are projecting your light, Father. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen.
sorrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed the grave Our God has robbed the grave Name, your name is victory Your praise will rise to Christ our King Your name, your name is victory Your praise will rise to Christ our King By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together, to sing your praises, to call on the name of Jesus, to have the hope of Christ, the hope of the cross, the joy of salvation. God, we ask that today, as people bring of their gifts and talents in service, Lord, as people bring their their tithes and their offerings, Lord, that you would take our offerings, magnify them for your glory, for your kingdom, Lord. Not for our own fame, not for our own purposes or glory, Lord, but because yours is the kingdom. and You are worthy, Lord. And so we take all we have and we commit it to you. In your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Uh, If you would like to participate in our offering today, there's a few ways to give. We have a giving box out in the lobby, and you can also give online as well and by mail. Um, We are going to uh, hear from two more of our board members, and so I'm going to invite up um, Regina, and Dawn is going to come down, and they're going to give a a little testimony to, uh, to the areas of ministry that they are over. Thank you, Pastor. My name is Don Robbins. I am the Director of Youth Ministries, which for a lot of you is the Nazarene Youth International. And part of my duties is to play, have fun. Well, part of it. Part of it. Uh, But we also work with the the teens in Sunday school class, junior, senior high, and Miss Stacy Irvin, who's sitting out here. Stacy and I team teach the junior and senior high Sunday schools. And as part of that, We also encourage all the young people to join us on Sunday evenings at 6. For the ages of 6 to 12, we have fun, fellowship, and a lot of opportunities to serve. The teens in this church have stood up, and they they come here and have fun, but they also get out into the community, and they help out with church service. When we have trunk or treat, or when we have egg hunts, or when we have activities within the church, you'll see the teens come. We also have, as our teens are growing in prayer and in their walk with the Holy Spirit, you see teens stepping out to help in Sunday schools. As they grow and mature, they become Sunday school teachers. We have several that have already made that transition. We have some that are helping out with quizzing as well as helping other teens to grow as a teenager. In the, in the house of the Lord. So it's a pretty exciting ministry, a lot going on. Uh, last year we did a lot of fun stuff. We actually escaped from a candy store inside the escape room here in Woodbridge. We went to King's Dominion and had a fun day on roller coasters. We went to Funland in Fredericksburg and, and learned that, that Luke can get defeated by kids in a go-kart. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty fun. I got pictures of that if you want to see those. So it's a fun activity. It's an opportunity for teens to be teens, but it's an opportunity for them to open their hearts to the Holy Spirit. 
And if you were with us last month, you saw that one of our teens, teens accepted the Holy Spirit into their life and was baptized here in this very sanctuary. That is not uncommon. We've had several teen baptisms. We've had several students step up and ask to be more in part of the church. Next week, as we go through the, the church election, you will see a number of teens who have stepped forward and say, I will serve as delegates, as convention, folks who go to conventions to help make decisions both in ministry and in, in missions ministry as well as youth ministry. So now I'll turn it over to Regina, my colleague. Yes, thank you, Don. And Regina is going to uh, give us uh, about her ministry, and then she will also lead our benediction. Hello. I am Regina Saneri, and I have served as the missions directors for the church last church year, 2002 to 2003, uh, 2022 to 2023. Um, as missions director, I'm responsible for developing a team to pray for, to stay in contact with, and to organize speaking visits by missionaries to our church. Often these missionaries are the ones assigned to our church from either the world or the Virginia district of the Nazarene church. Throughout the last church year, the missions committee was involved in collecting and organizing crisis care kits hosting a lunch gathering for a missionary family who spoke to our church, raising funds to our, for our missionaries during Rocktoberfest, and distributing information about uh, six different missionary areas that um, we, as a congregation, prayed for um, during a week-long focus, prayer focus. I believe that the mission's focus is not only for uh, us to help those who are overseas, but I also believe that we can be missionaries right here in our community. And that is why the mission committee also um, links up and assists the outreach community, the outreach committee at this church. Um, we also helped them to collect backpacks for kids at the beginning of the school year. And we also helped um, organize and collect um, food drive during Thanksgiving to give Thanksgiving baskets to those in the uh, community as well. <clears throat> Last June, while um, on deputation, we had the Mann missionary family come and speak to us, and then afterwards we um, hosted a luncheon for them, and the whole congregation was involved. And to hear Jennifer Mann say that this was a blessing to her because she realized that there was uh, good memories that she used to have at her church when they had a chicken dinner after church service. And it blessed her heart. And we did not know this before we did it. It's the Holy Spirit working through planning. And we just got to bless her that day without even knowing it. We didn't know that that was going to bring up such good memories. And so I just want to leave you all with one thought that Never doubt that God can work through small contributions to bless ministries, either um, min to bless missionaries, either here on deputation or while they're out working in the field. Okay, if you would please stand for the devotion now. <laughs> The benediction today is taken from words in the New Revised Standard Life Application Bible and words of the Holy Scripture. As you walk through this week in faith, remember God's promises. God's greatest promise is that we can be saved through Jesus Christ, his one and only Son. Hebrews chapter 13, 20 through 21 says, May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen.